Hi everybody. Welcome to Thursday. For everyone who's forgotten what day it is. Um, today I thought that I would uh, share with you a piece that I've been working on um, that's getting picked up tomorrow, actually. Um, but just so you can see, something larger scale. It's uh, three feet by four feet all made of record covers. I kind of pointed those out yesterday when Lacey asked about them in the uh, live demo. So this piece is called uh, Dorothy Gale. Uh, and uh, it's uh, all record covers from the late 1960s up until like the early 1990s, but most everything in there is more heavily in the late 70s, early 80s. For instance, I'll take like a record cover like this Dionne Warwick that has lots of lovely pattern and fabric and then I'll just cut out a whole bunch of these triangles out of here and then work out a series of geometric shapes and designs ahead of time and then do it section by section and then make those designs overlap on the top. So there's um, three layers of triangles on this particular piece. Um, I'm trying to remember how many cuts. Definitely like over 800 individual pieces. But this gets to go live at VCU somewhere. Guess I'll find out after uh, June 10th. Thanks, Lacey. Glad you liked it. I don't have a big uh, empty wall in this space right now, so I just kind of had to prop it up the best I could. Um, what's everybody working on? Has anyone made any progress on their collage? Awesome. It's been kind of wet, so I haven't been able to shoot outdoors. But then I got some work that I need to shoot as well. I have a another piece that I'm working on right now that I was hoping to share. Um, but I was having some issues with it this morning, and now it's got... 60 books or whatever just piled on top of it trying to keep it flat. It's uh, four feet by four feet, all made out of scraps from uh, Sienna types. Started out with squares, but I'm about to do little uh, triangles over them, different layers, some with bleed on the back. How do I usually shoot my work? Um, I'm married to a photographer. That makes it <laughs> a lot easier. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm kind of particular about 
what, how it gets captured. So, um, say if it's in a gallery setting, like we need to go in there when no one's there and put up a black cloth to block the light and um, reflection and you know, it's a big process, and then when I just am trying to document work as I'm going, sometimes I'll just shoot it because we have cameras. Either take it outside and use some natural light during the day if I'm around, or um, I've got a, a couple of white walls in the house that I can hang on, or um, you know, either using painter's tape on the back or actually hanging a piece and then shooting it. Um, and then a lot of my process work I've been shooting with like my cell phone, but I'm realizing that my cell phone is um, way too old for good documentation. Oh yeah, and I can talk about um, you know, the conceptual ideas behind my work. Um, you know, any any work that I make, um, it, it's usually out of uh, discarded items and um, you know, pre-used materials, things with uh, secret histories in them, um, you know, things that have been lived with, used, processed, things that have uh, impacted people's lives. So... Um, you know, when I'm working with library materials, um, all those stamps, all those markings, uh, every interaction is uh, kind of documented and marked, and um, you know that whatever happened between the, the reader and the book, or, um, you know, the material and the patron, um, that it had some sort of impact or some sort of usefulness, or you know, created some sort of reaction in some way, like if it was useless, wh whatever it may be. And with these uh, LP covers, uh, you know, at one point someone owned all of these. All of these have a story behind them. Um, there was a purchase and interaction of some sort. Someone went out and was hoping to, you know, live long term with these things and then they get passed around. Um, in the end, like, this is all from one big box of, uh, well, actually two big boxes of uh, discarded LPs from a record shop, uh, stuff that they couldn't sell. And um, so I kind of, like, took out the um, original use of the covers to, to market a person, to market a record, and just took, you know, colors and textures and... Um, little things that pop, mix them all together, um, you know, laying out uh, layers of color and, um, you know, really trying to move the eye in a lot of different directions. It's a, it's a maze, it's a map. Um, you can get lost in different corners, your eyes just keep, keep on going um, instead of, you know, this is exactly what it is. Like you have to spend time with it, follow it around, kind of see like where the patterns go, where they end, where they fail, where they're, you know, accomplish something that you didn't notice before. Um, it's an interaction with uh, information. Um, you know, the, especially w when working with the library materials, it's, um, you know, what information was this attached to? What information can this give? What information does it allude to but it can't give? Um, these layers of uh, personal and communal experiences. Um, you know, all this data. In the world that we live in, you know, a painting like this is exactly what the world looks like. Um, just a whole bunch of little bits and pieces all overlapped and flying through the air and just, um, you know, what do we hold on to? What do we grab on to? What c catches our attention? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot of uh, conceptual layering. Um, even some of the images that I'm throwing in here are purposeful. Um, there's a, another piece that I can talk 
about like this. So this piece right here, um, again, record covers, um, but uh, it's titled Persephone, and so the story of Persephone is she gets dragged against her will by Hades down to uh, the netherworld and is you know, basically forcibly raped and held there, and um, then becomes a, a goddess, and um, all these people uh, pray to her, and um, she ends up being released, and it's a whole complicated story, but um, I was noticing in this one pile of records that some disturbing imagery from time to time. Um, there were a couple of record covers that had it's hard to see here, but there's a man like grabbing a woman by her arm and dragging her away. And there was another uh, one with like a man kind of overlooking a, a woman's chest. And um, like there were a couple of uh, wolf images, uh, including the wolf eyes here. Um, you know, some kind of tame. Uh, ballroom dancing, gallantry, uh, you know, that type of things as well. Um, and then some of these, like, little explosions and layers of fabric that I thought were interesting. Um, but when put all together, I felt like I could kind of allude to the story of Persephone. Um, and again, there are those complicated layers of the story and how it changes over time with purpose, and, uh, you know, there's versions of it, uh, you know, in Roman mythology, uh, you know, based on the Greek myth, and, um, anyway, so. Yeah. Let's see, has anyone said anything? Anyone got anything that they want to ask, or um, you know, any questions they have? Anything they want to share about what they've been working on? Flip it back here since some people are just joining again. My mind's always going a, a mile a minute down here when I'm working, but um, it's weird having those thoughts out loud. <laughs> yeah, for those who just uh, came in, uh, this piece is uh, called Dorothy Gale. It's made out of uh, record covers, uh, discarded record covers, and um, it's uh, three feet by four feet. And I was just kind of sharing some of my process and asking y'all if uh, you had anything to ask or share. Or... Let's see. 
originally I was going to go one more layer on this piece. I decided to stop while I was ahead. Um, but you'll notice, like, with these large pieces, medium pieces, and the smaller pieces, I was going to go one set smaller, then it was just going to get way too busy and complicated. Um, but initially I did a test ahead of time, just to kind of see if I liked that level of layering or not. Better to try in smaller spaces ahead to kind of get an idea, do a lot of drawings. Like I said, I take notes with, you know, I number how much of every color I have, every different light type of design, different material, however I want to categorize it so I can spread it out, um, find key elements to interact in a very particular way. Um, yeah. Make sure that I can keep with a dynamicness, even if there are mistakes. Uh, like I was talking about the other day, mistakes happen all the time. Uh, that's why I can't share that other piece with you um, that I've been working on with the sienna types, because, yeah, mistakes happen, and then you change the way you have to interact with it, and that creates a, a problem to be solved. and. Um, that can be frustrating at the time, but in the end, like, always help push you and your work further. Um, but the more you can prepare, especially when you're working large, the more likely you are to get better results. How long did this piece take? Um... A long time. Um, as far as actual construction of the piece, um, about a month. But um, cutting out the pieces, uh, I mean, that's probably a, another three weeks or a month on top of that. Um, so, yeah, I would say like six to eight weeks to make this piece. Um, just because you can only cut for so long. You get past, like, four or five hours of cutting a day, especially the same shape and the, you know, making the same general movement and building up that callus on your uh, thumb and finger. Uh, yeah, you just have to stop and move on. and uh, It's a mental game, so... Making this many cuts in prep is tough. Like, for the last two months, I guess, I've been cutting more, because I'm going to make two more panels this big. Um, and now that I've done it, done all the layers, um, I could predict how many cuts I would need for each panel, and plus extras. And I would, this one, I just kind of went all over this one particular box, but the new ones that I'm doing, I specifically collected certain covers and then mixed them up with uh, some randoms that I got. Um, I really got interested in um, the odd fabrics of the 70s and 80s on LP covers um, and the bunching and stuff that happens uh, and trying to get a lot of those for a piece. Are there any specific mistakes you've made that have made your work evolve from the very beginning? Um, yeah, I mean, I allow a lot of chance into my work. Um, you know, I... Uh, I, when I draw, uh, about five or six years ago, I decided that um, you know, I was going to start drawing with uh, my left hand, blind, without any material, just move across paper, kind of see what happens, um, and inviting that chance and being willing to destroy things. Um, and so when I first added the, that drawing technique, say, to 
the uh, library materials, um, the flower shape just kind of happened naturally, and then I went to a monster drawing rally for 1708 Gallery in Richmond and tried it there um, with that material, just thinking, like, I'll just do it for monster drawing rally, and I was accidentally... Um, changing, cutting, and overlapping some things that I didn't want to during that process. And those mistakes kind of led to a new idea of maybe how to interact with the materials. And then when those pieces like all sold real quick and I was surprised that people enjoyed them, it kind of pushed me to just keep on trying those type of combinations. And even like designs like this piece right here, the Dorothy Gale piece, um, when I first made a piece like this, um, I had an, I was doing this uh, show for uh, Iridian Gallery here in Richmond, and um, it was con it's connected to Diversity Thrift, and the show was an like upcycling show where you go into Diversity and you, you know, grab a couple of items and then you make a piece of art about, of it and then they sell it to uh, benefit the gallery. And so I picked out a bunch of records, initially thinking, like, I've made vinyl pieces before. Um, but then I got interested in the covers and started chopping them up and tried to make patterns with them. But the edges were really rough, and I didn't like the way that it was turning out. In order to hide um, the edges, I started doing multiple layers and changing the size and shapes. Um, as they overlapped. So that first piece that I made, because it kind of went disastrously and I didn't like it and I just kept on trying to hide things with more layers, it gave me, you know, kind of the uh, experience, ideas, structure to make all of that better and make sense. But if I hadn't had that random exercise and I hadn't made all those mistakes, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am here. It's nice have, having some extra challenges here and there to do something that's a little different than your normal practice or a different material, um, some sort of different process. Um, dealing with the cyanotypes was like a way to try and mess with some of that. I've been doing these drawings, and I wanted to size them up, but because we're stuck at home, um, I didn't really want to invest in a whole bunch of self screening stuff to do that now, um, but I knew that I could uh, draw on transparency and um, do cyanotypes, so I've been just taking something out of my practice and trying to combine it with something new in order to push it a little bit further. Let's see. Got another one. Worth showing. And then the new piece won't be exactly like this, but I've just been taking different sections of cutoffs of failures, and uh, I've made a large panel. Um, it'll be a little less straightforward than that, but uh, yeah, should be interesting. There's a there are going to be a lot of dropouts too. Where you get 
get to see some of the runoff on the opposite side of the paper. Anyone else got anything? All right, well, I hope everyone's making some stuff. Please share it with us. And um, I'll check in again one more time tomorrow just to encourage you to um, make a piece and send it in to Owen Hall. Get it into the curator off-duty.